Growing old may seem like a far away event, but every one of us will experience death. Easy things become difficult, our bodies eventually wear off. But what if everything we have been told about growing old was wrong? What if we could slow down aging to better enjoy life till the end? David Sinclair, a professor of genetics at a Harvard Medical School, thinks humans don't have to age. He believes aging is a disease and it's treatable. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to slow down aging. The best way to learn is teach, and that's what I'm doing. We first need to understand what longevity genes are and what they do. All living creatures have longevity genes. They are proteins and enzymes containing information about how our body is supposed to work. Some cells supervise, while others do the actual grunt work. When we are young, they function well but lose information over time. Like an old man suffering from dementia, they forget who they are, this is believed to be the single cause of aging. The key to slow down the loss in cell information is to achieve hormesis. This refers to the act of stressing our longevity genes without damaging them. When our longevity genes are stressed the right way, it gives our bodies a reason to conserve energy, protect us against diseases, and survive longer. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's true in the case of slowing down aging. Combining both natural and supplementation can be powerful, this video will share 4 natural ways and 5 drugs with promising results. Eat less often and fast. This doesn't mean malnutrition nor starvation, but instead aiming for a balance in allowing our bodies to exist in a state of want. The first way to fast is through a calorie restricted diet, which means eating about 30% less than what is needed. The second way is to intermittent fast, which means eating only certain times of the day. Both engage the body's survival circuit, telling our longevity genes to boost cellular defenses and slow down aging. I learned to intermittent fast and NAS daily. It wasn't intentional, but I succumbed to peer pressure because everyone wasn't eating until work was done. I felt more energized, focused, and alert. Although there's a period of hunger to endure, it eventually disappears. Calorie restriction is tougher. I always felt hungry with my stomach growling constantly. The truth is, most studies about fasting for humans are short-term and anecdotal, Always verify these findings through your own direct experience. The second way to slow down aging is to eat less meat and have more plant protein instead. Humans die without amino acids, the organic compound that serves as a building block for every protein in our bodies. There are 9 essential acids we can't make ourselves. Meat contains all of them, but it doesn't come without a cost. Many studies have shown heavily animal-based diets being associated with more diseases. Processed red meats are bad, especially hot dogs, sausage, ham, and bacon. The alternative is to substitute animal protein with plant protein, which also provides everything we need. When we compare equal weights of meats and plants, however, vegetables usually deliver lesser amino acids. But from an aging perspective, it's good news. Because a body short in supply of amino acids is a body under stress that engages our survival circuits. When we consume lesser amino acids, an enzyme known as mTOR in our bodies is disabled. This forces cells to spend less energy reproducing and more energy cleaning out damaged cells which is good for prolonged vitality. It seems counterintuitive because amino acids are often considered helpful. At the same time, an excessive amount of amino acid prevents the body from receiving longevity benefits. All these may also explain why vegetarians suffer lower rates of diseases than meat eaters. While it can be tough to completely be a vegetarian, consciously eating less meat and more plant protein will be helpful in the long run. The third way to slow down aging is to exercise, which is a literal application of stress to our bodies. Exercising improves blood flow, organ health, and gives us stronger muscles. But what is responsible for that happens at the cellular level. Exercising activates our longevity genes to turn up energy production and forces muscles to grow extra oxygen-carrying capillaries. Running 5-6 to six kilometers a week reduces the chance of a heart attack by 45%. To fully engage our longevity genes, high-intensity interval training works well. If you're able to significantly raise heart and respiration rates, it triggers the most health-promoting genes in our body. Can I just eat what I want and run off the extra calories? The answer is not likely. When rats are given a high-calorie diet and allowed to burn off the energy on a treadmill, lifespan extension is minimal. It's only when there's a combination of fasting and exercising when lifespan is fully maximized. Because humans and rats are genetically similar, what works for them will likely work for us. 
The fourth way to slow down aging is to embrace cold elements. It turns out having a cold shower or walking in sub-zero temperatures are effective ways to slow down aging. Longevity genes are switched on by cold. This activates a form of protective brown fat in our back and shoulders. The amount of it decreases as we age. Over time, it becomes harder to find in our bodies. This is also the primary reason why babies don't shiver. They have more brown fat than adults. Malnutrition and starvation are not good for our health. Neither are frostbites nor hypothermia. Having goosebumps, shivering teeth, and arms aren't dangerous. They simply activate our longevity genes to create additional healthy fat to slow down aging. Avoid unnecessary DNA damage. Smoking cigarettes is a classic example. It causes DNA damage, which results in our body's DNA repair crew working overtime. This likely results in epigenetic instability that causes aging. Smokers seem to age faster because they do. The levels of DNA damaging secondhand smoke are about 50 to 60 times as high as in first hand smoke. If you do smoke, it is worth trying to quit. Not just for yourself, but for the people around you. If you live in a city, most of us are practically bathing in DNA damaging chemicals. Breathing air near a busy road, microwaving takeout containers, being exposed to yellow ink in home printers, these are enough to do extra damage to your DNA. The truth is, it's impossible to completely avoid DNA breaks. It's a natural and necessary act our body does every day. But there can be something said about avoiding things that break our DNA unnecessarily. So those are the natural ways to slow down aging. I'll now cover 5 additional drugs which show promising results. The first drug is resveratrol, a natural molecule found in red wine from grapes. It is produced in greater quantities when the plant is experiencing stress, which produces chemicals to conserve energy and survive longer. When resveratrol is fed to yeast, they got to an average of 34 divisions before dying. A human equivalent would be an extra 50 years. When fed to fruit flies, it added a week to their lives, a human equivalent of 14 years. When fed to mice, it protects them against cancers, heart disease, stroke, heart attacks, neurodegeneration, and makes them healthier and more resilient. If you're ever considering to take resveratrol, note the following. Resveratrol can't be absorbed easily by the human body. Ingesting it with fatty foods like yogurt will increase its effectiveness by 5 to 10 times. Look out for trans resveratrol supplements, not cis resveratrol. The next two drugs are NR and MNN. Both aren't regulated substances, they are supplements that are precursors to a molecule called NAD which boosts our longevity genes. Imagine a car that runs on fuel, the car is the longevity genes, NR and MNN are chemical compounds that react to become NAD which is the fuel the car runs on. Without NAD, our longevity genes don't work efficiently. Without NAD, humans would die in 30 seconds. NAD levels decreases with age throughout the body in the brain, blood, and muscles. If you're young, you probably don't need to take these supplements, but taking them for older people can help a long way. NMN experience so far on mice have shown positive results between the ones with MNN against those without. The mice that were treated outperformed in terms of balance, coordination, speed, strength, and memory. Human studies are still ongoing with MNN, NR, and NAD boosters, but so far, there are no toxicity or negative effects. The last two drugs are metformin and rapamycin. Both are controlled drugs that needs a doctor's prescription. It's pretty hard to get them by telling your doctors you want them to slow down aging, simply because they don't know the data and aging is not considered a disease yet. Similar to consuming lesser amino acids from plant proteins, Rapamycin disables mTOR in our bodies, which activates our longevity genes. Metformin is a common drug for diabetes used by millions of patients. In a study of more than 41,000 metformin users between the ages of 68 and 81, it reduces the likelihood of dementia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, frailty, and depression by a significant amount. Metformin is currently being accessed by the US Food and Drug Administration to be used as a treatment for aging. If it's approved, it will be a game changer to help people cope with aging. As I said before, direct experience is king. Always verify these findings for yourself. Conclusion In his book, Sinclair shares how his grandmother was an inspirational person who played a major role in his decision to pursue a career in the field of aging. She was energetic and healthy from her 60s to 70s. By her mid-80s, she was frail and sick. She died at the age of 92. 
You have been taught to think that people who die in their 90s have lived a long and good life. But Sinclair came to believe that the person his grandmother truly was had been dead many years at that point. What if it doesn't have to be that way? What if those final years didn't look so terribly different from the years that came before them? His book gives an insight into the potential of what could become a reality, and I think it's worth something learning about from scientists who are at the forefront of literally changing the world. As the horizons of death drift further into the distance, how will our search for meaning change? Does meaning require death, or does it merely require struggle? There's no universal right answer to this, but there's probably a right answer just suited for you.